can see the azaleas are gone, the lattice work is gone, some work started on the far side with the retaining uh, wall flower beds. From this elevation you can kind of tell the and I wanted to level it out so that the water would drain away from the house. But got a couple of loads, let's see, one, two, four loads of topsoil brought in because this is all very sandy. It's either sand or if you dig down, you hit red clay. So I wanted to bring some topsoil in to be able to get some grass and plants growing. And you can kind of see the, the makings of the uh, the flower bed right here. It's going to be a retaining wall here and then a flower bed in front of it. And it all, this is just the base. It'll, you can see the blocks right, uh, it's right there. They're going to come up two or three levels up from where it currently is. And uh, and then we'll plant flowers or sh shorter bushes in there, and uh, have uh, the uh, water swale around the house instead of headed for the house. But I think hopefully these azaleas will take root.
Okay, let's take a look at board. So you have to figure out how to do this uh, downspout going around it. And we have to take that strap off right there and uh, push it out a little bit or into the fire bed. But, and then on this one, it's going to have a, a beam coming out. I, mean, I still got to dig a trench for the, the front of the flower bed. That's what each of these are beams up against the post. Give it a, a little structure. These have already pre dug some of the hose holes. And uh, this one you could. Uh, actually see what the flower bed's going to look like. Uh, I tried to do half laps on them to make them strong. And then, let's see, right there, I spiked the, the corners through both beams with some uh, 10 inch spikes. You can barely see that one too, it spiked. You know, and uh, when they joined together right there, I uh, inserted a rebar, drilled the ends and put rebar in them. But I'm trying to do mostly half laps like that. And uh, this one here just ended up where the concrete slab for the post and was higher than the others or like that one there i'm on top of the concrete that one there i'm on top of the concrete this one the concrete was a little higher up so i had to uh, slim down the uh, timbers six by sixes but, um, still got a long ways to go but that was one of many six by six by 12 footers and uh, hopefully it'll get going faster now that i've got most of the the base wall started and uh, we'll just see how fast it goes Okay, this is the end of another day working on the retaining wall and flower beds. I'm just showing the uh, progress. Some of these is, this is actually level one, two, three. So it's about three levels over to in this area. And then it's like two levels over to that post. And uh, so, like, this is like two levels, and then uh, I think this piece is actually just the, the top level, and these tie beams to tie it together. So you can see it's um, each flower bed's going to be four foot by the posts are about ten and a half feet apart, 
it's a ten and a half feet by four foot and uh, two on this side not sure what I'm gonna do with this little area here I'm thinking to just put a tree planter there I may box it in also and uh, this is the uh, school bell and then uh, on the other side two flower beds and for right now I'm just sort of boxing in where the stairs are and uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do under the stairs um, yeah, flowers aren't going to grow there and the dogs like to get in there and dig holes so I may take those old concrete blocks and put them in there but that's about it for the this day I think I did one two this is either day three or four I can't remember and it's only like half days because it's um, I'm just not physically able to do more than about four to six hours and six hours I've wiped for I have to recover for several days so that's what we got that's where we got and used up all the lumber that I had picked up already so time for another trip to uh, lumber yard okay we're on I think week two maybe two and a half of uh, this build I only get a day or two only half a day uh, some days of work done doing other stuff I'm just doing uh, uh, medical treatments and doctor's visits and then broke a tooth so I had to go to the dentist so took the lattice work out uh, well first we have to get rid of all the azalea bushes then I, for this project about two weeks ago I took the lattice work out and cleaned up dug the trenches do, did some measurements and uh, the other thing I had to take out that was kind of a difficult was right under the porch there was a sheet and a half of siding to get the, the siding down with the siding nails were difficult and had to rip that out so the the uh, porch band up at the top there was actually covered with siding so I had to take that out and then took the lattice work out got some measurements figured out where my lowest point was going to be which this end is a low point that end down there was the very lowest point so I decided to start at that end and come this way with it and so like day two I think I laid the first first timber six by six timber these are all six by six pressure treated although come to find out the 12 footers are five and three quarters and the eight footers are only about five and a half inches so there's a little discrepancy on their six by six and uh, but making it work and uh, so I started at that end uh, about a week ago I think I got the first level in getting the first foundation getting it all dug down and level just took forever and then uh, this week starting to actually make some progress to one whole layer down and uh, in front of the, the porch posts and that's going to be my primary retaining wall four feet out i'm making a planter bed for um, whatever flowers bushes or whatever so there's a four foot bed and i'm thinking to come up another level over there but i need to work on this end so i went and got eight more six by sixes by 12 foot and then i used the eight footers cut them in half to do the, the flower bed to, uh, to come out four feet so see if I can get some more done on it today I would really like to finish it up today and tomorrow although today is already half gone over half gone so we'll see what happens today I'm gonna switch to time lapse and uh, it'll go by in a few seconds for you
Okay, another day I'm working on these uh, flower beds. Um, kind of got all the base pieces in. I'm going to backfill this last one that I had to put in late last night. And uh, I got three more 12 footers and I got maybe two eight footers that I may be able to do a little bit more today. And we'll just see what gets done. Okay, done for today. Um, ran out of timbers and uh, went ahead and the reason I put the concrete blocks under the steps is the dogs tried to nest under there and dig out under our steps. And then when it rains, it fills full of water. So that's why I was moving those concrete blocks under there just to keep them from digging under there. But let me grab the camera and we'll uh, take a closer look. So, down here at the gutter, so yesterday I had to actually move this gutter out a little bit and I was really able to reattach it and get it outside of the, the timbers and uh, got most of these pretty level. I know where it's not, but just looking you wouldn't really. And. My wife and I discussed it. I, I'm, I'm thinking to go up one more level just because of the grade of the, the, the yard here. It really needs, and that's what these little blocks are for. It's just to see what it would look like with one more level. You know, and the current grade of the, uh, the ground, you know, I, I was already assuming to do another one, but so we may go ahead and, and put another one up. But we're gonna leave it like this for about a week. Let it settle in and see what we, uh, yeah, there's the dog that wants to dig under the steps. And uh, went and filled these with topsoil. And uh, <sighs> You know, this pile of topsoil here, I don't think it was on camera, but you could see me going back and forth with shovels of topsoil. When, sometime, next few months, I guess, I'm gonna get a skid steer and I have four loads of topsoil here, three here and one over there. And I'm gonna spread these thin. And I'm thinking actually maybe to uh, regrade this and bring a little bit more into this valley here and uh, grade it. So what I'm trying to do is get the water to swale away from the house. You can kind of see here, it's like 
swelling and you can see we had a downpour and just the runoff you know naturally went into that area so and there's like a gully over here where the the rain washed and uh, so I'm thinking to bring maybe some of this dirt over into this area and to level it out a little bit more and then spread the topsoil out a thin layer of topsoil and then put sod down but that's the plan but this is uh it for this week probably and maybe i'll go uh get some more timbers and uh do one more course up and it, go, it goes faster once you get that first course laid down and get it level then it moves a little faster and uh figuring out what i want to do and how i want to overlap most of these you can see like this one here i didn't even spike it because it's like uh, lincoln logs they are notched and fit together so they're not going to go anywhere you know they're sitting in the dirt um the ones over there i had to spike because they're the exterior corners and the ones down at this end i, I put a spike in them too but most of them i'm not i'm just notching and uh fitting them together um i'm not a like amish mennonite kind of fitting let's see right there i, I spiked that one um maybe i need to put one over here i haven't put one in there yet the other problem you have is when you spike it in the sandy soil it beats the timbers down into the the soil so then everything that you leveled up is not level anymore but that's about it for today. Okay, took about a week off for uh, in the flu and uh, recovering, probably over a week, and uh, kind of back to where uh, we left off and uh, made a room for the lumber yard and got a pretty heavy load of uh, timbers. Hopefully this will be final load, maybe one or two others, uh, depending on how it comes out. But let me give you a walk around of what it looks like now. Uh, you can see that this one's just sitting here. It, it's just a uh, propped up there. But I'm going to go up to that level across here. And this half has another level above this half. So you can see this back board here is um, the same level as all of that one, that down there, and except for that board. So, and this one's just sitting there, and these are just props to see how much further up to go. So the idea is to go up another level down here, or no, the two levels actually just because of the way it's running out is done at that end. And the, the swale I want with the front of the house and the water run, running away from the house. So yeah, that's what it looks like right now. So hopefully I get this done. I don't know if it's today or pretty soon. All right, we'll switch to time-lapse and get it done. Okay, I thought I'd show you what I'm doing here at the uh, cutting these boards. These are uh, six by sixes, which is actually about five and uh, five eighths ish. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting a uh, half lap, half lap. So 
I'm cutting it half lengthwise. Uh, I'm not doing the full width because the way I'm stacking them together, I only need half up one and half up the other. And then when I put the tie beam in there, it'll cover both of them and, uh, and hold them in. So what I'm doing is, uh, so let's see, about two and five eighths. And I like to mark them on all, all sides, uh, but at least on the side on that end, I cut this corner off. So I mark it with an X saying that's the part I'm, I'm gonna cut off. And then on this, I'm just doing a uh, two and five eighths here also. And I'll do a little bit on this side just so I can see if I need to take a look with the chainsaw. And uh, mark the end. If you've seen how I, uh, I finally decided that the best way to cut it and uh, that it comes out the, the most accurate. So, let me, I like wearing this little knit cap because my ears get sweaty with these uh, ear muffs. Yeah, I should show you where I marked it. So you can see where I'm doing half this way and then I'm going to do the full width across here but this this is where the tie beam will sit in here so the, the next log will be the other half of it so what I'm doing is I'm going to cut all the way across keeping the bar straight and watching this line till it gets close to here now flip the log on the side and use the tip of it to go down tried other variations of it cutting it this way and it just seems to you know for me with a chainsaw that's the easiest way i found that it'll work and uh get what i want done done so let's set the camera back up here and get her going <laughs> Of those cuts and the end cuts a little bit different because I go the full width of a, the cross tent ties to uh, get it.
Okay, done for today. I uh, ran out of timbers again, but you can see this is near the final product of the, uh, the timbers. We're still gonna put where this uh, one by four is, probably put another one by four across there and maybe, maybe paint them or something. But that's basically what we're gonna end up with. Need to do a little bit of backfilling down through here, up against it. But um, I just barely got those spiked in place. And then on this side, um, that board and this one is the final height. Well, that one was two, I guess. And that one, there's a board, there's a one timber missing. That's short one 12 footer. And these 12 footers weigh probably over 100 pounds. Some of them are so wet that they're heavier than others. And uh, I still need down here two uh, four foot. So I get a one eight foot and cut it in half. Another four foot here and another four foot here. And then this uh, 38 inch, I got to do something with it too. So I think I got to get one 12 footer, one, two, two or three eight footers. But, and then uh, I did the, this uh, one by four across here has got a swag in it. You can see it. So I'm gonna see if the ones I pulled down, if any of them are better and uh, put another one by four across here and uh, some in here too. But, um, so another trip to the lumber yard and uh, just talking to my wife, we're gonna have to, if you look at it, you can see that the gutter kind of swings out at the bottom. You know, I had to disconnect it and uh, because you can see at the top, they have the gutter in front of the post, but that's where I wanted my my, my uh, timbers. And this is my helper. This is Daisy. And she loves bringing me sticks and getting right in my face when I'm digging. But okay, girl, it's okay. All right, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna go tomorrow or next video to uh, finish this up, hopefully. Take care, everybody. Okay, we're back at it. Um, ran another load, in the, you know, another load from the lumber yard, and hopefully this is the last load of the six by sixes. And uh, they're actually the last two that they had, so uh, I have to wait till I get any more before I go back. But hopefully, this is all that I need, and uh, I can get started. I need to level the ground here up against the, uh, the, the flower box and the timbers and I still I got some more 10 inch galvanized spikes to uh, spike them in place and right, uh, like this board I need to be a double check there and most of that and I'm gonna need to do it so uh, I'm gonna switch to a uh, time lapse and hopefully get this project done Okay, got the uh, flower beds done, and just through, you can see through the time lapse. But each uh, section takes quite a while for one person, and these 12 footers are pretty heavy. So, um, got had enough for the timber, so I don't have to go back. I just miscalculated on the number of 10 inch spikes I needed, so I need. I went in and drilled them, so I need uh, several more of them 
to, uh, to finish it out. But it, it'll sit in place until, until I get through. So uh, let me bring you in here and I'll show you what it looks like now. So here's the, uh, the final final on the flower beds. Uh, so much sun glare, but you can kind of see corners with the overlapping and I'm not sure what I'm going to do over here. So these are just kind of temporary sitting there and you can see where the, the dirt will come back up against the, uh, up against the, the retaining wall right here. And then I'm going to fill that with more of this topsoil that I got. I'm going to fill that. I may wait till I get the skids to here, rent the skids here and get it in here and it'll go much faster. But you can see uh, with the, where the, the grade is and the wall will be about one timber higher than the, uh, the ground. And then over on this side, threw a little bit of, of uh, transplanted some grass here just to try to have less dirt being drug into the house. But uh, you can see, I, I'm going to probably go ahead and backfill this wall, but you can see how this looked on this side, in this corner. One of the difficult parts was these downspouts. <laughs> now I just loosened them a little and bent them so that they'll fit around it. But I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it that way or put a something on there maybe cut it shorter and do flex hose not sure you know this one i've backfilled with some uh, the topsoil may bring it up even more with some good topsoil that, that was mostly the sandy topsoil that i had here in the yard already and on this side i already started putting some of the topsoil but that's about it for now. All right, everybody, take care.